Hey everyone, this is Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson we're going to talk a little bit about coding style, which has nothing to do with um, the way that you solve a problem in your program. It's actually more to do with how to make your programs look good. So we're going to talk about why coding style is important, and then we're going to talk about the sort of three major categories that at least I want us to focus on now as far as coding style is concerned. If you look in your book, uh, at the very end in Appendix L, you will see what I think is a very good comprehensive list of style rules. And I think I agree with every single one of them, and yet uh, there's no way that you're probably going to be able to pay attention to all of them all at the same time. A lot of them are going to uh, talk about things that you've never even learned yet. And so I would just ask you to keep referring to that and uh, focus on implementing the rules that make sense, and especially the ones that we're going to talk about now. So let's talk a little bit about coding style, which again is just really how your program looks. Um, I remember hearing a uh, joke in computer science when I was in college, which is that old code never dies, really. It just ends up having to get maintained by somebody else. And you don't want to be that somebody else who gets handed a big mess of code that you can't read or understand. And you definitely don't want to be the person that produces those big steaming messes of code because um, no one's going to hire you. If you can't code that other uh, write code that other people can understand, then your code really isn't very good. So beyond that, I think there are a bunch of other reasons why having good style in your code is really helpful. Um, it makes your code easier for everybody to understand. You and everybody else is going to look at your code besides you. It also makes it less likely that you'll make mistakes. A lot of these rules are designed to protect you from yourself, to make your code um, follow some basic guidelines that ensure that you don't accidentally make what are usually uh, syntax errors. And the last one to mention here is I think it, it just makes your code easier to write. Um, if your code is easy for you to look at and understand then it will save you time when it comes time to modifying it or adding new code to your programs. So let's talk about the three big categories of style that I'm most concerned that you focus on in this class. And the first one has to do with writing comments. Now we've talked about this a little bit already. Comments are those extra um, lines that you can put in your program that don't actually run, but they just uh, have information for someone who comes along to read and understand your program a little bit better. Now, in the case of uh, Java programs, Java has a feature built into it that allows you to write what we call javadoc comments that uh, will get turned into real live documentation when someone views your program. And the style guide talks about that, but just so we understand, every class that you write needs to have a comment block at the top that has at the very least a short description of the class and it also has to have your name and the date that you either created the program or last modified it. And for your name, you should use the at author tag, and for the date, you should use the at version tag. Every method that you write uh, for every class, and we'll talk more about methods later, but every method you write also has to have a comment block on the top of it that has a short description of what the purpose of the method is, and then has an at param tag for every parameter and an at return tag if the method has a return value. Again, if you don't understand what that means right now, that's okay. But remember, when we get back to parameters and return values, that you need to be putting them in the comments for your method. And every class variable, if you use variables in your classes, also needs to have a javadoc comment explaining what it's for. This is your way of writing documentation for your classes. And Java will take that uh, 
comment that you write and turned it into some spiffy looking HTML documentation. We talked about using those at tags and where you need to use them. Uh, I'll make one more suggestion about commenting, which is write your comments before you write your code. Before you sit down to write a method, write the comment block. My reasons for suggesting that are two. One, uh, a lot of times it will help you realize things that you hadn't thought about when you first started to come up with a design for your method. Um, and two, it will just give the method a little more clarity um, if you have to sit down and think about what the comment is going to look like before you have to write it. Okay, second big part has to do with naming. And specifically, what are the names that you're going to give to all the variables, all the methods, and all the classes in all the programs that you write? And the basic thing to remember here is that write names that make sense. Okay, you've got a programming language now that allows you to use long variable names and doesn't charge you for them. So instead of having a variable called I, create a variable called interest. Use words that you can understand and other people can understand too who come along and read your code. Beyond that, uh, there are some typical style rules that most Java programmers follow that you probably should because otherwise people who read your code are probably going to misunderstand it. And they have to do with classes. When you create a class, it should begin with a capital letter. And that's the only thing that should begin with a capital letter. Variables, methods should start with lowercase letters. That way you can distinguish them very easily. The last one is if you use constants, those are variables that have values that never change. We'll talk more about that later. But variable names or variables that are constants are usually written in uppercase so that you can notice them very easily. Last part to talk about is how to do um, layout in your program. And this has to do with how you arrange um, visually the code in your program. So try to make your code easy to read. Think about your program as being like an essay. You wouldn't sit down and write a five-page essay in one paragraph. And you shouldn't write your code that way either. You should use visual clues that make your code easy to process. Things like line up your curly braces. Line them up vertically so that you can instantly see just by scanning down the page where the closing curly brace is that goes with every opening curly brace. Use white space. That means spaces, um, returns, um, to break up your code. Okay, if you have a major section and then you're about to have a different section, put a blank line in between. If you've got a long uh, code statement with a bunch of arithmetic operators, put spaces around them. Make it easy to identify each part of your program. And make your lines short enough so that they fit on the screen. Nobody likes having to scroll left and right to read your code and you run the risk of someone not reading your whole code if they don't notice the fact that it's going to scroll off the end of the page. So that's just a uh, a very broad overview of some basic principles having to do with coding style. No one's going to sit down and say you have to write your code exactly like this. The most important thing is that you're consistent and you develop a style that people can learn to understand and that your code is easy for other people to read and make sense of. If you can do that, your code will be fine. So that's it. Thanks.